Hymn 18 Who shall be able, Master, to describe you fully? Those who do not know you fail, knowing nothing at all, but those who understand your divinity and faith, they are gripped by much fear, and with trembling they are astonished, and they do not have anything to say, for you are beyond the mind. All incomprehensible, all unattainable are your works and your glory and the knowledge of you. We know that you are, and we see your light, but we are all ignorant of your type and your nature. But we have hope, and we seize faith, and we know the love that you gave to us, infinite, unspeakable, by no means contained. Love is light, light unapproachable, light operating all things. And this is said to be your hand, and is called your eye, and your all holy mouth and power and glory and your face is made known beautiful beyond everything. Love is an unsetting sun to those who are elevated in divine things. Love is the ever-shining star for those who contain nothing more. Love is set against grief. It drives away ill will, and it completely removes satanic jealousy. In the beginning, love makes one melt away, and it threshes one by purification. Love chases away thoughts and humbles emotions. It teaches the hidden one to be humbled and does not allow one to be scattered nor to act randomly. Again, love separates the visible world and causes one to forget all distressing things in life. And love makes things grow and heals thirst and freely gives strength to those who toil virtuously. Love puts out rage and the seething heart and it does not allow one to get angry or all upset. When love flees, it is pursued by those who are wounded, and it is sought with much love from the heart, but it returns and appears and shines, benevolent, and shines benevolently, and it makes those who chase it turn away and be humbled. And that which was sought out has them sent away in fear, as if not worthy of the good which is beyond all creation. O gift beyond telling! For what has love not accomplished, and what is it not? Love is delightfulness, and joy, gentleness, and peace, immeasurable mercy, an abyss of compassion, invisible yet seen, infinite yet comprehended, impalpable, untouchable, yet capable of being grasped in my mind. When I have love, I do not look upon it. I quickly hasten to grasp it, and it flies clean away. I am completely at a loss, and I burn, and I learn to beg, and to seek out with weeping and much humility, not to suppose that things beyond the nature of my strength and human exertion are possible, to seek the compassion of God and His infinite mercy. This time is revealed as short and reduced, but one of the passions it casts out of my heart. For it is not possible for a person to conquer the passions fully if the light does not come to the rescue. And again, if it does not chase away the whole passion with one accord, for the natural person does not have the capacity to receive the whole spirit all at once and to become dispassionate. But when one has accomplished all things within their power, nakedness, detachment, separation from one's private things, cutting off from one's will, denial of the world, endurance of trials and prayer and remorse, poverty, humility, then one has all their strength. Then slightly, as a faint and tiny ray, suddenly encircling the mind, love snatches one into ecstasy and leaves quickly lest one die, with the result that the one who sees because of the great swiftness does not understand, nor remember the beauty, nor yield less the infantile, eat at the nourishment of perfect men, and so burst straight away or be damaged and vomit. And so from there love leads us by the hand, strengthens, teaches, showing itself and then fleeing when we need it. Not whenever we wish, for this belongs to the perfect ones, but whenever we are at a loss and utterly faint, it comes to the rescue, it appears from afar, and makes me perceive it in my heart. I cry out in distress. I am bound tight, wishing to grasp it, and everything is night, and my wretched hands are empty. 
I forget everything and I sit and lament, without hope of thus seeing the love light ever again. But when I wail much and want to stop, then love comes mysteriously and grabs my head and mingles with tears. I know not who it is, and it shines upon my mind with an exceedingly sweet light. But whenever I know who it is, love quickly flies away, leaving for me the fire of its divine desire, which does not allow me to laugh or to look at human beings, nor to accept desire for any of the visible things. By small degrees, love lights up. By patience, it is kindled and becomes a great flame seizing the heavens. Relaxation quenches it the distraction of domestic matters and the cares of life's anxieties, for it is in the beginning. Love invites silence and hatred of every glory and being rolled on the ground and tread upon like dung. For love enjoyed these things and wants to be with them, teaching the all-powerful humility. And so when I attain the flame and become humble, then love is with me without separation. It converses with me enlightens me, love sees me, and I see it. Love is in my heart. It is in heaven. It explains the scriptures to me and adds to my knowledge. It teaches me mysteries of which I am unable to speak. And love shows to me how it snatched me from the world and ordered me to have mercy on all those who are in the world. And so walls press around me, and I am seized by my body, and I am truly outside of it. Do not doubt it. I perceive no loud noise, and I hear no voice, and I do not fear death, for I disregard even that. Anguish, I do not know what it is, even if everyone were to afflict me. Pleasures are bitterness to me, all passions flee, and through all I see the light, in both night and day. Dry appears as night to me, and night as is day, and I do not wish to sleep, for that is a loss to me. But when all bad things surround me, and seeming to drag me down and to overpower me, then suddenly I find myself with love outside everything, outside joys and painful things and pleasures of the world. I revel in the unspeakable and divine joy. I make merry in love's beauty. I often embrace it. I kiss it and fall down in worship. I have great thankfulness to those who have arranged for me to see what I was desiring, to partake in the inexpressible light and to become light, and to share in the light's gifts here on earth, and to obtain the provider of all good things, and to lack no spiritual gifts, who, by drawing me, has guided me to these beautiful things, who brought me up from the depth of worldly deceit, who separated me from father and brothers and friends and relatives and pleasures and the joy of the world, who showed to me the way of repentance and remorse, from whence I found the day that has no end. It was an angel, not a human being, but he is fully human, by whom the world is mocked and the dragon tread upon, and the demons tremble at his presence. How do I tell you, brother, what I saw in Egypt, the wonders and signs accomplished by him? For now I shall tell you this one, for I cannot tell all. And he came down and found me a slave, and a sojourner, and he said, Come, my child, I shall lead you to God. But I said to him out of much faithlessness, And what sign will you show to me to guarantee that you are able to deliver me from Egypt and to rescue me from the hands of treacherous Pharaoh, lest by somehow following you I risk greater danger? Light a big fire, he said, and I will walk into the middle, and if I do not remain unburned, may you not follow me. This word dumbfounded me. I did what was ordered, and the flame was enkindled, and he was in the middle, unharmed and not offended, and he was calling to me. I am frightened, I said. Master, I am a sinner. He came out. He came to me and embraced me. Why were you frightened? Tell me. Why be afraid and tremble? A great and fearful wonder, greater than this, you shall see. I was astonished. I said, I do not dare to approach you, and I do not wish to appear more daring than the fire, for I see that you are a human who is superhuman, and I dare not to look at you whom the fire feared. He brought me nearer. He took me in his arms, and again he kissed me with a holy kiss, 
and the whole of him spread the scent of immortality. I trusted. I was pleased to follow him, and I desired to become a slave to him alone. Pharaoh seized me. The terrible overseers forced me to give heed to brick and straw. Alone I had not strength to flee, for I had no weapons. Moses spoke to God to do something useful. God whipped Egypt with tenfold plagues, and Pharaoh did not bend nor set me free. And indeed my father intercedes, and God kindly heard. And he orders his squire to take me by the hand, and he promises to journey together with us. Being released from Pharaoh and the evils of Egypt, he puts courage into my heart, and he freely gave the daring not to fear Pharaoh. Thus also did the workman of God. He took my hand and marched before me, and thus we made a beginning so to bring the road to an end. Lord, give to me sagacity, the intercessions of my Father. Give the words to describe the wonders of your hand, things that you brought to perfection on my account, me the profligate and lecherous, leading me out of Egypt by the hand of your slave. The king of Egypt learned of my departure, since he despised the departure of one, but he himself did not go out, rather he sent slaves whom he had bound by contract. They ran down and overtook us at the frontier of Egypt. All the vain ones turned around, all beat to a pulp. They broke their swords, they exhausted their arrows, their hands failed to act against us, and we persevered, sustaining no injury. The pillar of fire was burning and the cloud was with us, and alone we were passing through an alien country, in the midst of bandits, among tribes and kings. The king learned of his army's defeat, He became enraged and considered it a great indignity to be mocked and vanquished by one person. He geared up his chariots and mustered the soldiers, and he himself gave chase, boasting great things. He came and found me alone, lying down from exhaustion, but Moses was keeping watch and conversing with God. Pharaoh ordered my hands to be bound with my feet, and it seemed they had seized me and set hands to fetter me. But I was laughing lying down, arming myself with prayer, and with the sign of the cross, I fought all of them off, and not daring to touch or come close to me, standing from a distance where they seemed to fear me, holding fire in their hands, they threatened to burn me, and they were shouting great cries and making loud noise, and, lest they should boast as though doing a great thing, they saw me become light by the intercession of my father, and all of a sudden they retreated in shame. Moses came out from God and found me resolute, joyful, and trembling at the miracle. He asked what happened. I reported the whole thing to him. I told him that there was Pharaoh, king of Egypt, arrived just now with an immeasurable army, and he was not able to bind me, but he wanted to burn me. And all those who came with Pharaoh became a flame, and out of their mouth they spewed fire against me. And when they saw me become light by your prayers... They all became darkness, and just now I am alone. Look, Moses answered me, and you may not be so bold, and may you not look at the visible things, but fear the more that which he hides. Come, let us take flight, as God exhorts, and Christ shall do battle with the Egyptians in our place. Let us go, I said. I shall not be separated from you. I shall not transgress your commands, but I shall keep them all. Amen.